Hey guys, it's Dave and Evelyn from The Camera Store. Today we're talking about the brand new Fujifilm GFX 50R camera. Yeah, this is their new medium format camera that they've basically taken the GFX 50S and put all of the guts inside a brand new rangefinder style form factor. Now the Fuji guys gave us a copy. We're able to take it with us to the mountains and to do some portrait photography. guys, Billy and Francis gave us a pre-production sample of this camera. However, in this case, it doesn't really matter because the 50R has the same internals as the 50S. Yeah, now this is the same sensor you're going to find in the Hasselblad X1D and also in the Pentax 645Z. It just tweaked the Fuji specifications. Yeah, it's a 51.4 megapixel sensor of medium format goodness. Yeah, it's pretty amazing when you nail a shot with this. Let's be real here though. Okay. You can totally get a full frame sensor that's close to, if not 50 megapixels. Yeah, there's a lot of cameras in the market nowadays at 46 megapixels. Canon's got their 50 megapixel sensor out there. So you can get the, um, the resolution out there. So what's the advantage to a medium format camera with 51 megapixels? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people that like medium format will say that they like the look of medium format photography. And this goes back even to the film days. I mean, lens per lens, you can get more shallow depth of field with an f2.8 lens on a medium format sensor than you would on a full frame sensor. Yes, but nowadays we have access to so much good glass, even from the micro four thirds all the way up, really fast glass, which will give you that shallow depth of field. So the appeal to this camera has a certainly a different aesthetic to it. Yeah, it seems like the, the tonal quality is a little bit better. Now, of course, I really like Fuji's color science. <laughs> and so in this case, I think the the skin tones and, and the color tones, even for landscape photography, are really, really nice. There's just something special about the medium format look, and it's tough yeah. to really describe. Yeah, now of course, I think you told me that it's almost intoxicating having that much resolution. It's hard not to zoom in um, really, really tight into your image to take a look at those fine details because it's able to capture so much information. Yeah, if you're used to running a 24 megapixel sensor, for instance, having double the resolution, and especially the fantastic glass that they put in front of these, their whole system, all their lenses are amazing. But being able to punch into that kind of resolution, you're just wowed every time. Yeah, now of course, this camera does have some limitations if we're talking about it as a camera that can do everything. I mean, there's a lot of full frame cameras out there right now that are kind of the Swiss army knife of photography and video. Yeah, uh, like on D850 for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Is probably one of the best DSLRs in the market period. Yeah. But what's the advantage of this over that, right? Yeah, well this to me is more like a precise, you know, Japanese knife that has a very specific purpose. It's not good at everything, um, but what it is good at, it does really, really well. For me, it's like the sledgehammer of cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Japanese knife? Okay. It is purpose built for a few applications and when it when you're doing those kind of applications, landscapes and, and streetscapes and, and controlled portraits and where you have much, much more control over the environment and your exposure, it's unbelievably good. Yeah, still life seems to be kind of the easiest thing to nail. Um, it does take a little bit more skill and precision and patience in order to be able to get um, great looking images of more moving subjects with this camera. Yeah, I keep reminding myself when I'm using it, watch your shutter speeds, watch your shutter speeds constantly. You gotta shoot much higher than you normally are used to to get yeah. sharp images. Yeah, it really slows you down. It's not a very forgiving camera, um, but I think that makes it a really fun tool to work with because you do have that challenge of kind of overcoming the, the precision of the camera. Yeah, now using this camera for the last couple of weeks, I've, I've carried it everywhere with me. I've tried shooting everywhere from, from just spontaneous portraits to just spontaneous sort of street scenes and everything else. I never really felt at home with it till we were out in Banff 
on yeah. a tripod. And that's where I found this camera excelled. Yeah, now we also had the opportunity to meet up with one of the local guides, Mark Unero, who's a good friend. He's also the founder of Rocky Mountain Photo Adventures, and so he knows the area like the back of his hand. So he took us to chase some light to get a great sunset shot. And he also showed us his techniques, how he uses filters, and how he would set up the shot to capture that money image of a sunset. Yeah, so we just got to Castle Mount, and it's one of my favorite spots for sunset. This Japan. looks amazing, man. Let's go get some shots. Let's do it. <laughs> the best way to get good compositions is, is, is when you're not limiting yourself by gear, fiddling with stuff. You know, having this nice light camera and a small camera uh, makes it easy. So in this case, I know because my exposure is really quite bright, but I might as well have a look anyways to see what my exposure is going to be like. I like my exposure, got lots of shadow detail. The color of uh, the mountain is really quite nice at that exposure. So it's now just a matter of sticking an ND on. I generally don't want to push it down so far that, that my sky is actually darker than the reflection, which looks a little unnatural. That's a good looking shot. I find that because especially with landscape photography, I'm mostly shooting wide angle stuff. So for me, with I, I shoot a Canon uh, 5D Mark III, and most of the time I'm shooting with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. You get a lot of perspective distortion when you're shooting at 16 yeah. mil. For me, I mean, I would shoot medium format landscapes all the time. The camera's a little larger than you might expect. If you want to get a feeling for what this camera's like, go down to your local Mason area and pick up a brick because it's about the same no. size. <laughs> it is. Okay, now I'll give it more credit than that. They have put some work into it. So yes, it is comfortable to hold in the hands, but not as much as a GFX 50S is. It has a much more contoured grip to it. Yeah, the, yeah, the physical size is pretty big, but it's not that heavy. Like it's only 775 grams. Uh, there isn't an optional grip available for this one, like there is with the 50S. So if you want to shoot portraits and that's your main thing, uh, I think the 50S is going to be a better choice for you. Yeah, maybe just for ergonomics. Um, but I think for, for traveling around, it's kind of funny, the GFX 50S was touted as being a good street and travel camera when it was released, and this takes it one step further. Um, the style and form factor of it is kind of more like the X-T2 or X-Pro2. Um, it's a little beefier, but it's still a really nice, sleek option for medium format. Now, it does have an articulating screen on the back, which I really like, and I find it sort of invaluable with landscape photography. We were quite low to the river, when we were shooting the Castle Mountain shot there. Yeah, I was on my belly. And having the articulating screen certainly helps out. It doesn't have the third axis like the GFX 50S has though. So mm -hmm. if you want to shoot this way, it's not quite the same advantage. No, and that's purely just to keep the cost down on this camera and also saves a lot of size because if you look at the GFX 50S, like that whole back of it is really thick. Yeah, the back is, is thick and there's a couple weird button placements that I questioned and I was fumbling with a little bit, but mm -hmm. um, this is a much more simplistic approach to photography, I find. Yeah, now you do miss out on getting your ISO dial on the GFX 50R. However, the dial on the front um, where the shutter button is does have the ability to switch from ISO, shutter speed, or exposure compensation. Yeah, it's really well laid out. Um, you also have the touch screen, which allows you to bring in a level or bring in your histogram and, and everything else. Um, by swiping, which is really handy. Yeah, it's not the fastest touch screen, um, but it, it does the trick and you are able to move your focus points around. Um, but as a better option, you do have the joystick or the, the focus lever, so you can move that around to quickly change and pinpoint your autofocus. Yeah, so you have a touch screen or some tactile buttons to work with. When it comes to autofocus, this uses a contrast detect autofocus system, so it's not as fast as phase detect autofocus that you find on a DSLR, but it is about medium speed <laughs> for medium format, so it's, it's pretty good for medium format. No, it's very usable, um, but it's a slower pace. I'm not going to even attempt to shoot sports or action or anything with it like that. Um, no, no, and in continuous, it's even slower. We find it a little hunts a little bit, um, but it's it's not designed for shooting fast action. Exactly, and that's what this camera is not designed for. So the autofocus does work, but you have to work with it a little bit more. Um, I much preferred using this camera in manual focus 
And there's a lot of really good tools for that. Switch over to manual focus, you've got focus peaking. You can also punch in on your focus and, and magnify things to really get, make your critical focus accurate. Um, it's a yeah. much more methodical way of photography. The nice thing is uh, this camera is built for the outdoors. It is weather sealed and it's very rugged. Uh, we were shooting with it in below minus 10 degrees Celsius and it had no problem. I was actually really impressed with the battery life of it too. Now, um, aside from landscape, obviously, we did take it to a lifestyle portrait shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my friends at Fieldstone Winery, which is just based in Strathmore, Alberta, only about 30 minutes away from Calgary, they make some amazing fruit wines, um, dessert wines, and it's all made with Alberta grown fruit. Um, now, Lyndon Gill, he's a good friend of mine, so we asked if we could do some portraits and photograph him in his booth uh, for a marketing campaign. It was nice to try a brand new piece of kit in a scenario like that. Yeah, we decided to go with constant light because we had some really nice shadowless LED lights that we wanted to try out as well. So having a great camera and a great sensor just part of the equation. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that Fuji's got some amazing lenses with this. Yes. Uh, all their lenses are high quality lenses capable of amazing results. I fell in love with the 23mm lens and also the 110 portrait lens. Yeah, now of course these lenses, they're known for being really fast, they have great edge to edge sharpness, and they're relatively compact for medium format. Yes. We found that the bokeh was really pleasing. It's a nice circular bokeh compared to a couple other medium format lenses that might have more of that sort of, you know, harsher edges. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, now, color science. Mm, I love Fuji <laughs> color science. The skin tones are really, really nice, like just so beautiful. And the nice thing is with Fujifilm's processor, you are getting the film stimula simulation <laughs> modes. They're very sim. <laughs> The simulation is very stimulating. <laughs> it's really nice. But you get Provia, Velvia, Acros. Yeah. All the, all the favorites. Yeah. I don't know if it's just an old guy thing, but Wi-Fi frustrates the hell out of me. <laughs> I think it's an old guy thing. Um, I didn't have any issues setting it up, um, but every, every system's different. Every app is different. And so those things always just take a little bit of time to kind of finagle and get used to. Yeah. Now, once I got it going, it, we're, we're, it did work well. So this camera does shoot video. Yes, yes it does. Tell us all about it, Ev. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does shoot 1080p. It does not shoot 4K. Um, it does have a 2.5 millimeter mic jack. It does not have a headphone jack. It has pretty bad rolling shutter, aliasing, more. It's really not a great video camera. Now, all that being said, it is kind of nice to have a video option. So there's a couple nice things about the files with this camera. One, you have different options for your aspect ratio as well as your overall file size. Yeah, the camera does have in-camera raw processing, which is a really nice feature. So you can take your raw files and do some work to them, whether you want to crop it to a different aspect ratio into more usable file that you can yeah. export to your phone. Yeah, you can also export them as 8-bit TIFFs. Um, so it gives you some really nice options right in camera. Now, if you want to do processing in your computer, there is now raw support with Capture One software. That's very exciting. Yeah, so you can also do tethering. So this is pretty exciting news for Fuji. It's actually native support with Capture One. And so this is a really nice move to see Fuji going forward. There we go. And the diopter is all messed up because you have terrible <laughs> eyesight. But oh well, it's okay. So what are your final thoughts on this camera? I like this camera a lot more than I expected. I mean, I always have a soft spot for Fujifilm aesthetics. I think they're really beautifully built. I like this so much more than the 50S. Um, and I could really see it being a good camera that you could travel with. You can do landscapes, um, documentary, reportage. I can see a lot of really good uses for this camera. Yeah. Now, I was a bit brutal with it when it comes to the size of it. But overall, after I was using it for a while and really getting into the landscape side of things, that's where mm -hmm. I found this camera really shined. You have to approach it very methodically. You have to be very conscientious of your shutter speeds. You have to be yeah. very conscientious of, of all your shooting parameters. But it's capable of amazing results. And we talked about earlier, when you show these images to people it's intoxicating the resolution and the quality mm -hmm. you're getting from both the lenses and the sensor um, I love it yeah and one thing that we can't not mention to you is that the price point for a medium format camera is insane they're able to get this camera down to 56.99 Canadian which is insane. Um, yeah which is insane I mean you have to pay about double that to get into some other systems definitely it's not a general purpose camera I would choose a ton of other cameras over top of this as a walk around everyday camera mm -hmm. but if I know I'm going out and I'm shooting certain certain things that are gonna require um, the time to, yeah. to achieve results 
Um, I love this thing. For yeah. That. And it does have some nice little touches. Um, it does have the dual card slot. It has UHS 2, <laughs> but you can use some of your older cards as well. Um, it does charge with USB C. Yes. You can also do tethering. Um, it has some nice little touches on it. You get the joystick, you get um, some of the top dial controls. It kind of has everything in mind for the pro photographer. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed our hands-on review of the GFX 50R. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. We love getting the likes from you guys. Yeah, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and let us know what you thought of this camera by commenting below and give us a like if you liked the episode. We'll catch you guys soon. Have a